Welcome to the time of death. This video is for informational purposes and in no way meant to glow or fire condone violence. In today's video, we'll be discussing the murder of Kashmir James. James was shot and killed Saturday, December 25th, 2010 in the 1700 block of West 85th Street in Manchester Square, according to LA County Coroner Records. Derek Williams, Lamar McKnight, Darnell Deshaun Houston, and Ezekiel Simon were subsequently arrested and charged with the murder. The following is the evidence at trial. At approximately 10 p.m. on December 25, 2010, victims and friends DeAndre Woods and Kashmir James were talking on the street in front of Woods' house on 85th Street near Western Avenue in L.A. They were standing next to James's car. Her three-year-old daughter was inside the car. Woods noticed a blue four-door Chevy Tahoe with tinted windows driving on the street and slowed down as it passed him and James. Woods had his back to the street and James was facing the street. Woods took notice because the area was dangerous and violent since it was part of A-Trey Gangster Crip territory. About 30 seconds later, Woods went to hug James and saw a spark. James exclaimed, oh my God, and fell onto Woods, knocking him down. He saw a man with a gun jogging towards him. Woods got up and ran and heard gunshots. He slipped and fell on the wet ground and dislocated his shoulder. He saw the gunman running toward Western Avenue and he was not hit by any bullets. Woods was not and has never been a member or associate of any gang. At the time of the shooting, D. Jefferson was walking in the area and heard gunshots. He saw a man pointing a gun at a woman and he jumped into some bushes for cover. He saw a dark blue four-door Tahoe with tinted windows and 24-inch chrome rims. He could see two black men inside the Tahoe which left the scene quickly with the engine revving. Jefferson saw a woman on the ground and ran to her. He could see that she was shot in the head. The woman, who could not speak, gestured toward the car. Jefferson noticed a little girl inside the car. He grabbed the girl and took her to a woman who lived in a nearby home. James died from gunshot wounds to her head and neck, and she had gunshot wounds on her legs, consistent with trajectories indicating she had already fallen when her legs were shot. Jefferson was not able to identify the shooter. Police recovered 13 spent shell casings at the murder scene all of which were fired from the same gun. Police also obtained a surveillance video from a nearby gas station depicting either a blue Chevy Tahoe or a blue GMC Yukon with rims traveling southbound on Western Avenue at approximately the time of the shooting. Tony Johnson was a member of the 111 Neighborhood Crips in 2010. He spoke to the police several times about the shooting in exchange for leniency after his various arrests. He told police three days after the murder Johnson was with defendant McKnight at Ezekiel Simon's house. McKnight told Johnson that they had driven past a man and woman standing at a car talking, then turned around and pulled up to them. Houston jumped out and started shooting with a 9mm gun. The man started running and McKnight was worried that his truck had been caught on videotape. Hoping to better his own situation, Johnson told police where to find the SUV. In January 2011, Police located a vehicle matching the witness description parked in front of a residence at 110th and Hobart Streets in the direction the SUV had fled. It was a blue GMC Yukon registered to the defendant McKnight's father. The SUV was subsequently repossessed in June 2011. There were no rims on the SUV at the time of repossession, but 24 was written on the SUV suggesting that it once had 24 inch rims. When police searched McKnight's residence in 2011, they recovered four rims from the garage that matched the witness description and a surveillance video. After Houston and McKnight were arrested, the LAPD detectives in charge of the case, Detectives Stacy Sinkowiak and Roger Guzman, arranged for a confidential reliable informant known as Witness X to share cells with Houston and McKnight. Witness X had performed approximately 200 similar operations and had received close to $70,000 over the years for his services. He had belonged to a neighborhood crib gang and recognized Houston because they had been in prison together in 1995 or 96. He knew Houston as Lil Pan from 111 Neighborhood Crips. The transcript submitted to the juries reflects that Houston told Witness X that he was involved in that Western murder and admitted that he was the gunman. Houston listed the gang monikers of four others involved. Lamar McKnight, AKA Barr, Derek Williams, AKA Baby Beefy, Ezekiel Simon, a.k.a. Elope, and Markel Parker, a.k.a. Mister. Houston told Witness X that the younger gang members weren't putting in enough work and that he was going to train them. 
On the same night as the murder, Houston had taken out the young gang members on an earlier mission outside of a church, and one of the youngsters had fired 17 shots from a 9mm handgun at seven rivals, missing them all. The crew had to return to the gang hangout and rearm. Defendant McKnight then drove the SUV to the scene of the crime. Defendant Houston demonstrated how victim Woods moved victim James around, using her as a body shield as she was repeatedly shot. Houston didn't feel badly that James was killed because she was, quote, tramp associated. Tramps is a disrespectful reference to members of the A-Tray Gangster Crips. Houston had dismantled the gun and chunked it into the ocean. He didn't believe the police had anything on him other than hearsay. A month later in September 2011, after Houston told witness X that Derek Williams was in the Yukon during the shooting, Williams was rearrested and interviewed again by detectives in Kowiak and Guzman. The detectives told Williams that he had been identified as being in the SUV. Williams admitted that on the night of the shooting, he sat in the back seat between Ezekiel Simon and Markel Parker. Defendant McKnight was the driver and defendant Houston did the shooting. Williams told the detectives that when Houston started shooting, Williams couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't just like hop out and run right there because I'm not nowhere by my house. And this is the first time ever in my life ever doing, being in a situation, anything like that. So I'm, I don't know, what am I supposed to do? I was just 15 at the time and I couldn't do anything. LA County Sheriff Detective Eric McDonough testified as the prosecution's gang expert. He had been an officer for 20 years and had worked with the gang unit for eight. He had handled hundreds of gang-related crimes, spoken to hundreds of gang members, to gang interventionists, community leaders regarding the gang lifestyle and the culture and the activities within the gang. He concentrated on three gangs, including the 111 Neighborhood Crips. Detective McDonough opined that all three defendants, along with Ezekiel Simon, were members of the 111 Neighborhood Crips. Based on their field identification cards, Houston and McKnight's self-admissions, and gang-related tattoos on Houston, Williams, and Simon. Ezekiel Simon is the only one of the four defendants who accepted a plea deal. He was sentenced to 29 years in state prison for the Christmas Day murder. Following the trial, the jury found defendants guilty of first degree murder and attempted murder. Houston and McKnight were sentenced to life without the possibility of parole plus a consecutive term of life plus 20 years. Williams was sentenced to 50 years to life in state prison. Kashmir James was 25 years old at the time of death. 